Welcome to First Five Years, a series of online conversations with creative professionals on how to make a living from art and design. Efrat, are you there? Yes, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Welcome to First Five Years. Thank you. How are you? How's it going? Yeah, quite well. <laughs> um, yes. It's the end of, of May 2021, and um, most people have been or soon will be vaccinated um, against this COVID-19 virus. It seems like we are on the verge of going back to a normal world. How do you mm -hmm. feel about that? Well, it would be for me, uh, uh, I would be very happy, uh, like everybody else, I guess, but uh, especially because I would like to meet people again, uh, to make portraits again in a normal situation, not like now behind a, a screen, a perspex screen, which is uh, creating a, a distance. I think it's also mentally distance when you think to talk to somebody behind the screen like we do now, but of course also with a perspex screen. Is there a way that you can show us a little bit uh, of your work and maybe uh, talk about who you are and what you do? Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, like you said, I, I came, I, I'm now almost 20 years in Rotterdam. Uh, and I came, uh, I was born in uh, Haifa. It's a, it's a port city uh, like Rotterdam. Uh, and actually my work today and the artist I'm today is um, reflecting my life in Rotterdam because uh, my work is always, I'm looking for a balance between uh, a personal life and universal uh, um, experiences, uh, between interacting and reflecting, uh, between private and public. And in Rotterdam, uh, such a diversity, I started to go out to the street and uh, to meet people. Uh, in the beginning, it was just like fascination for the faces I saw on the street, but quite fast it, uh, it became, uh, the conversation became for me more important than, um, than the face itself. Oh, it was, uh, it's, uh, I, I couldn't separate the conversation from the face. Uh, in the beginning, it was a practical reason. Uh, I wanted people to be relaxed, to be, uh, to forget that I uh, make a, a portrait of them because I work also three-dimensional. Uh, these are a clay portraits. So I need to see all these uh, faces and uh, all the different faces, angles of one face. All the portraits I make from plasticine, it's actually a children clay, which always soft. And that's the nice things about this material that uh, I can use it in a cafe in the street because I have all the colors with me and I mix the colors on spot. Because the plasticine is a, uh, uh, stay always soft, I started to make photos of the uh, portraits. In the beginning was the idea to, to make it uh, as a documentation, but it became a, uh, an art form of itself. So the portraits are not only uh, portraits, but a part of kind of a theater, a world that I build in my imagination. After a few years, I did the portraits. I started not only to photograph them, but I thought the conversation are very interesting. And I started to write stories about uh, the people I met. And uh, part of these um, stories and photos of the portraits are uh, gathered in a book. So because the conversations be, uh, um, start to be so important for me. I wanted to get to know people better. And I started also a new project, which is not portraits, but uh, the subject was about mother. And I interviewed people about their mothers and uh, try to get to know them through this way. 
according to the interviews of uh, with the people i i make the um, kind of mythological mothers um a fantasy mother so you can it it's not a portrait because i didn't met the mother but i make a fantasy mother you graduated in the 1999 in israel yeah and in 2003 you graduated again at the peak schwartz postgraduate yeah. course in, uh, in rotterdam how do you look back at your time in art school the time in the art school was uh, actually uh, it was a uh, a lot of uh, 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 fighting with myself with uh, new things, new ideas that I uh, new ideas about art, uh, which I didn't grow up with, or um, going uh, out of your uh, conventions, prejudices. What is art? What what, what does it mean to be artist? After graduation, how did you start to make a living and pay for your art? Uh, well, it uh, it took many many years to to make a living in, uh, from the art. Uh, I worked uh, a bit in restaurants. I did. Uh, I was assistant for artists. Uh, a bit teaching and. Of, uh, and I had also support from family, my partner that I live with. So it, it's a long way and uh, it's still uh, not easy. In the beginning, I didn't even know that you can make money from performances. So I, when I did a project, uh, the portraits on the streets, suddenly I started to get more invitation for festivals. For example, I was uh, in 2013 on oral festival for uh, more than a week. And this was a paid job. And also small festivals were also paying me for making portraits of the public. What is it exactly that you eventually sell? Do you sell the sculpture or the pictures or the performance or the book or the text? Yeah, that's always a, it's a, always a funny question. I, I, I sell the book, I sell, I sell performance, I sell a portrait. Uh, but uh, if you ask me what I prefer, uh, I prefer to sell a project. So like now, that's uh, uh, I, I commit to have to have commission for a long time project because uh, I don't like to make just a port I, I do it sometimes like a portrait for a private person. But it's not my favorite. Uh, I want to be more free uh, to work on a long time project. And that's the ideal way of selling. How do you value your work? How do you know what it's worth? Uh, it's very difficult. I'm also for many, many years, I'm not working with a gallery anymore. So I decide everything myself. Uh, I try to keep, uh, uh, sometimes it's very emotional, you know, it can be a, a small, uh, unimportant sculpture, but for me it's very important and I will put a high price and I would not want to sell it at all. And sometimes maybe it will be a huge sculpture which I want to get rid of and I will put the price uh, down <laughs> to get rid of it because I don't have a place in the storage. <laughs> but uh, that's of course, uh, it's a joke and it's not a joke, but I try to keep the prices also reasonable that um, uh, not only uh, big lines, of course, you've, you've, I try to, to see if it's a, a, a private person which doesn't have a lot of money, then I might say a diff you can say a lower price. Then, um, but in a way, I think I keep the prices not too high. Evert, we have viewer questions here popping up. Um, would you like to uh, answer a few? Yes, of course. Uh, what do people think of you making 3D portraits of them and use them for exhibitions? And of course, uh, sometimes the portraits are 
uh, looks very much like the person, but sometimes not. And it's an artwork. So for me, and f it's not the person anymore. It's, um, it's not like a photo. Uh, even though a photo on some point is also not the person anymore if it's an artwork. Uh, so most of the time, people, uh, there is no question of copyright if this is what the, uh, the question was. I, I do have one uh, um, kind of uh, rule. Uh, I don't sell the portrait of someone to someone else. Huh. So, uh, uh, I, if I sell it or if, if it's exhibited as a collection to a museum, but then it's not private anymore. But I will, if you ask a portrait of someone else, I will not sell it because I think it's not fair. So only the person himself can buy his own portrait mm -hmm. or it's part of my collection or museum collection. Money does not seem to be your first interest. What is it that makes you do what you do? My interest is, is to know better myself, to know better the other people, to understand better the world, to, to, um, to have an interest in life. <laughs> uh, to enjoy myself, uh, to, to discover all the time things. Um, yeah, and of course you want to feel some um, uh, verdeering. Uh, um, appreciation. Appreciation and, and uh, money is, uh, is appreciation and it's wonderful. But sometimes, and many times, I sit, with, I sit with people on the street that not only have money or homelessness or have very little money. And if they appreciate uh, what I do, it means for me a lot. Or if you teach and you uh, children who don't have so much uh, chances and they enjoy the lesson and you don't get so much money uh, if you teach, it's also appreciation. What advice would you give your 24 year old self as a starting artist? Um, yeah, well, it's a, it's a difficult advice. I would say don't be so insecure, but how can you, uh, yeah, it's easy to say uh, <laughs> after 20 years of struggling in, um, how can you feel it? That I, I don't know. Um, and not to have so much expectation and also not to, to, to be patient with yourself. Like I finished, when I finished the first graduation, before I came to Rotterdam, I was 25, okay. But, uh, and I felt like the world is already over. I felt uh, I for sure will not reach anything. I'm too old. 25, I felt too old and too, and, uh, and that's something um, a pity, uh, like uh, to wait for a big success. I would not, that's also something, not, not to wait. Just do what you like and, and see how it goes. Give yourself the time without pressure to discover what you like, what you're good in. Yeah, we're getting to the end of this interview already. Um, <laughs> do you have anything to add? Um, well, it's, I think it's very important to remember that uh, to find a good balance. I think that's what my work is now about, but also what uh, life is about as an artist and maybe not only as an artist, like to find a good balance between being social, uh, working on your network, being with artists, uh, but also that it will not take over your... Uh, I try to keep a very um, uh, routine life. I'm not going to drink coffee through the weeks, very rarely <laughs> with my portraits if I'm working. But, so try to keep very re regular life. 
because I think as an artist, it's, it's not so easy, uh, or it seems that you don't have this. Uh, so keep, work on your discipline. On your, um, and don't isolate yourself too much. <laughs> I think that concludes this episode of first five years. Yeah. <laughs> Time flies. Thank you so much for being our guest. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I want to thank the Willem de Kooning Academy Business Station, Design Team Common Collective, and again, our guest speaker, Efrat Zahavi. Please contact us for all your comments and suggestions by mail and Instagram. Tune in for a new episode of First Five Years. Stay strong, everybody. My name is Kuno Torint. Thank you for watching and goodbye.